Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, Skylum Software updated Luminar AI to version 3.0. Now, many people consider this to be a major update, and I think Skylum does as well, because whenever a software developer increments the digit to the left of the decimal point, in this case, the 3 in 3.0, when they increment that, that's considered a major update. I disagree. I think this is an incremental update. I think it's a good update. I think Luminar AI is a great application. And I think what they've done in this update is nice, uh, but I wouldn't call it a major update personally. Now, of course, I am a Skylum affiliate. If you want to check out Luminar in the description below this video, I'll have a link uh, to Skylum's website. I also have a discount code, which will save you $10. All that will be listed in the description below this video. Now, as far as what is new in this uh, version of Luminar AI, they of course, you know, fix bugs. They've said they've improved performance. They also added support for Apple M1 Silicon. So if you own an, um, you know, an Apple laptop or a new iMac that has the M1 chip, they have support for that now. Um, now, the other things I'm gonna talk about two and I'm gonna show you two others. Uh, first of all, in templates, uh, see this purchased little button here? That wasn't there before. Before anything you purchased was kind of down in, you know, your uh, actual templates down here. Now you could just click on that and any templates you purchased will show up here. Now you could see I didn't buy any. And you could then directly click here to buy more if you want. So that has been added, nothing major. If we go over to edit, They've um, improved Dodge and Burn a little bit. Uh, you could see that there's light and darken, erase, as far as Dodge and Burn is concerned. They added this softness slider. Uh, this softness slider just helps you blend in the Dodge and Burn a little better um, overall when you're doing, using it. So I think that is nice as well. Now, um, the major thing that they did, um, if you want to call it major, is in the sky replacement filter. Now, uh, what they've done is they gave you a little more control over the reflection because in the past, you know, when you replaced a sky, it kind of plopped the reflection in there and you had very little control. You could really just adjust the intensity of the reflection. Now you have a little bit more control. So we're going to go to the sky selection drop down and let's just throw a sky in here. All right, we threw this sky in, in here and you could see it's reflecting in the water and it looks okay, right? So we'll go back to the sky filter here. Now what they've done is they've gave you control of moving the sky up and down and adjusting where the horizon line is and the reflection moves accordingly. First off, we go to sky orientation, this slider, vertical position. You see if I move it to the right, I'm moving the entire like sky uh, image up. All right, and you can see it's just really, just moving the entire thing up, you could see that the reflection is moving with it. All right. So if for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be hitting that horizon line just right, you could just kind of bring it in there and have it move down to the horizon line. Then if you don't like the blend it's doing right here, you could go to like horizontal blending and try to blend it in there a little better into that horizon line area. All right. Like that. Now, below sky orientation is horizontal position, and the shift um, slider kind of moves the whole horizon line. Let me try to explain. If I move it to the left, you'll see I'm moving the entire sky down, and the reflection is going with it, but also the actual horizon line is moving down as well. So I hope you could see how that is different than what we were doing before. Now, this time, it kind of left where the, the um, Luminar AI found the horizon line right at the beginning and then orients the sky and the reflection around that horizon line. And you could move that sky and reflection, leaving the horizon line alone with vertical position. So the horizon line is staying right there. If you need to move the horizon line itself, the horizon position, you go to shift and then you're moving the whole horizon line. And now I could like move it way down here, right? Hopefully that made sense. So it gives you just a little bit more control 
over the sky and the reflection and how they relate to one another. Now, mask refinement, I don't think anything has changed there. They've improved scene uh, relighting. Now, it always relit the scene. When you threw a sky in there, it would make the scene lighter or darker accordingly. It also may affect saturation a little bit or may warm it or cool it a little bit. They've uh, supposedly in this version of Luminar AI have improved that. Um, I can't really AB it. I don't have the older version of Luminar on my machine, but you could see that um, hopefully they did, but you can readjust things a little bit, you know, relight strength, relight saturation. That has always been there. Okay. Now with the reflection, they added a water blur slider. They always had the reflection amount. This was really all you could do to the reflection in the past. You could just make it reflect a little stronger by moving the slider to the right or a little less by moving to the left. Uh, they've also now added water blur so that if you need to blur the horizon, like you have ripples in the water in the, the um, if you need to blur the reflection, well, for example, you have ripples in the water, you can move the water blur slider to the right. Okay, so that could help you just make it look a little more realistic. You could then could go down to sky adjustments and you could uh, go to defocus and you could defocus the sky itself. It's not defocusing the reflection. So basically water blur in a way is like defocusing the reflection and defocus is defocus the sky. And you can see that it does nothing to the reflection, just the sky. So if you want to try to make those match up, you have that ability to do that now, where in the past you did not have the ability. You could add like atmospheric haze as well if needed, stuff like that. So they've definitely improved the sky replacement filter and I think it's much better um, and it works great. Um, I think it's probably, you know, it's still, you know, Photoshop now has um, a sky replacement feature and I still think that Luminar AIs is better than Photoshop. It does a great job. Now. Another thing they did, it's kind of minor, uh, is in augmented sky. If you go to object selection, you now could see the objects. All right, so you could have these little things here. So if you want to throw a giraffe in there, something silly like that, you can do that. Now, what I want to do, uh, now you, this isn't new. I just want to show something with object selection because I've never demonstrated this. And I want to make you aware of something. And I've received an email from someone asking me this very question. Uh, can you add your own objects? It implies you can, because if you go down here uh, to the bottom, you can see that little plus sign. You also could go to the drop down and you could see show custom sky objects. So you could put custom sky objects in here. The problem most people have is they don't understand the custom sky object uh, has to be a PNG file with transparency. Now let me try to explain. We'll go to Photoshop here. This is an image, of course, of a seagull. And you could see that the seagull is clipped out from the sky. And this little checkerboard pattern that's around the seagull in Photoshop, that indicates that those are blank pixels. There's nothing there. This is uh, clipped out. Then to save this, what I would have to go is to File, Export, Export As. And then I would save it as a PNG file with transparency. Then once I do that, let's say I already saved this. Um, close it down. It's on my desktop. Uh, what I could do then is go to object selection, click this little plus sign. It's the seagull. I could click on that, open it, and then it will drop it in the image. And you could see that it's a humongous seagull attacking the people on the shoreline of Buffalo, New York. But you could, of course, go to place object and then you could resize it. But you see, it has to be a PNG file with transparency. And then you could come in and you could then, you know, add objects of your own uh, to your image. And you could then come in and defocus it maybe a little bit. Try to make it more realistic. Um, relight it. Whatever you need to do to try to make it look like it belongs there. Now, if we go back to this drop down and we go to this uh, little drop down menu inside of here, show custom sky objects. You could see that it put that file or that image in this folder. So you could just drag images, PNG files with transparency into this folder directly if you'd like to, or you could enter them one by one. 
by just clicking on either that plus sign that's at the very bottom of all the objects or go right here and click on that it brings you to that plus sign and then we could add geese let's say we want geese in there all right so this is again another png file with transparency and again it's way too big so we'd have to place object and make it a lot smaller something like this right still doesn't look right the light doesn't look right um, personally, I've, uh, I've never used Augmented Sky. Um, I just cannot get it to look realistic. Uh, and one thing I also want to make note, uh, you probably noticed already, is it's the reflection isn't showing up. So they don't have reflections yet in Augmented Sky. I just wanted to make you aware of that. So this isn't something that you would want to use in an image where reflection is required anyway, because it just won't look right. So we could just undo it. Now, if I go back to uh, this drop down and we go sh show custom sky objects, you can see they're both there now and they'll be there forever. All right, so we'll just reset that. So that's augmented sky. The only thing new is you now have these little postage stamp like looks or views of each of the sky objects that are in there. That's it. Um, that's what's new in Luminar AI. What do you think? Do you think this was a major update? I don't really think so. But I think it is a good update and um, giving you more control of the sky reflection, and that's important. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.